Hello and welcome to our second podcast for the criminology course here at Wyke. Today we are focusing on the biological theories which will be for your outcome 2 unit 2 exam on the 30th of May. Within the biological theories there are two subcategories. The first one is genetic studies. Under that category comes XYY, Jacob's study. The adoption studies, which is Christiansen, and the twin studies, which is Crow study. The second subcategory under biological theories is physiological. The first one is Lombroso with his study of ativism. Sheldon is the second one with his study of different body types and how that relates to criminality. The third one is Rain, who looked at brain abnormalities, including brain injuries. And the final one is Skerbo and Rain who looked at the chemical imbalance present in our bodies and brains and how that can lead to criminality. Within your exam, you will be asked to potentially um, attach one of these theories to a scenario that's being given. You will need to talk about the claims of the theory, the components of the theory, explain why that would give a reason for criminality and make sure you're including those keywords for maximum marks. Biological theories can be summed up as believing that criminality is born, it is inherited from parents via DNA and genetics, it believes in nature as a cause of criminality and that criminality is predetermined. One of the biological theories for criminality is XYY. The XYY theory is a genetic theory. This theory believes that people commit crime because of chromosomal abnormality. They believe that the person has an extra chromosome. Most of us have 46 chromosomes in our body. 44 of them determine body shape and two determine our sex. A woman has chromosomes XX and a male has XY. There are a number of chromosome abnormalities. One, con- one condition is the presence of an extra chromosome, which is XYY. Jacob et al. in 1965 stated that XYY men are called super males because they are more aggressive. This means that it increases the likelihood of their criminal behaviour. Some people have studied the XYY genetic theory and have said that XYY men are overrepresented in the prison population. 15 XYY men per 1,000 men in prison is compared to 1 per 1,000 men in the general population. This means that the XYY theory is very small in the general population. There is a very slim chance of people being born with the extra chromosome. The strengths of the XYY theory is that the genetic difference has been identified that can be tested. This means that scientists can prove that the XYY theory is real. However, a limitation of the XYY theory is that it does not even attempt to explain why women commit crime. Also, it does not explain how biologists know that the extra chromosome caused the individual to commit the crime and not their environment. Another limitation is there are people with XYY who are not criminal. A real life example is John Wayne Gacy, who was an American serial killer and rapist who took the lives of 33 young males. He lured his victims with the promise of construction work, then captured and sexually, sexually assaulted them, then eventually strangled most of them with rope. Criminologists believe that he had the extra XYY chromosome. With this, we need to be careful that people cannot use this as a justification in court for their behaviour, as they could try to say that XYY is their legal defence. One of the physiological theories for criminality is chemical imbalance by Rain and Scarbo. The claim was the reason for criminality is due to chemical imbalances in the brain. It focuses on serotonin, which is the chemical which provides you with positive thoughts. To prove his theory, they looked at 29 studies into antisocial behaviour within adults and children. They found that all of those had low levels of serotonin. The findings show that to control serotonin levels, you have to have a balanced diet, and that having a balanced diet can reduce the number of people committing crimes. An application for this theory is healthy diets in prisons. To try and prevent them from reoffending, prisons should provide healthy diets for all the prisoners or they should be provided in schools to prevent it as eating healthier could increase positive moods for serotonin levels to increase. The strength of this theory is that it's scientific, there is logical explanations and there is useful applications in real life. Weaknesses of this theory is that it's ridiculous. Weaknesses for this theory is that there is a small sample size 
and that is unrepresentative, as it is, as there is no explanations as to why criminals who have normal serotonin levels commit crimes. It is also reductionist, as it claims that all. It is also reductionist, as it claims that all criminals commit crimes due to low serotonin levels and chemical imbalances. Okay, so one physiological theory of crime is Lombroso's. Uh, Cesar Lombroso was a theorist and he um, proposed the theory in the 19th century. Um, so the theory compares the physical features of Italian prisoners to soldiers. Um, from this, he noticed a difference in their appearance and postulated that criminals have genetically inherited physical features that make them distinguishable from non-criminals. Um, uh, he claimed that from these anom anomalies, criminals are apparently a separate species, somewhere between modern and primitive humans. So the features consisted of a large chin, a hawk-like nose, excessive wrinkles and profound cheekbones. He, um, he concluded that the physical shape of a head and a face determines whether someone is supposedly born criminal. Alright, so Lombroso's theory did help to revolutionise the way criminals uh, interpret crime, because it's a very early theory. Um, it's often regarded to be responsible for developing newer theories which have sound scientific evidence. But the theory does lack sufficient biological evidence and the sample used is not a fair representation of all prisoners, therefore making the study unreliable in theory. Furthermore, his theory is far too deterministic, doesn't account for any externalities regarding the reasons why they may have committed the crime. Alright, so his theory basically made a generalisation the theories, the features mentioned are more applicable to certain people of different ethnic groups, uh, which can therefore encourage stereotyping. No, sorry, wrong bit. All right, last bit. All right, so in conclusion, though, most biological theories are relatively unreliable. This is because most of them are under the assumption that the correlation between two factors is a causality for crime, when in reality, this is not true, nor is it provable. There are two categories of the biological theory, Sheldon's summer types theory is a genetic theory. Sheldon, 1949, believed that people could be classified into three body shapes which correspond with three different personality types. These categories were endomorphic, ectomorphic and mesmorphic. Endomorphic stated that the body would be fat and soft and the person would tend to be sociable and relaxed. Ectomorphic stated that the body would be thin and fragile and the person would be introverted and restrained. And finally, the mesomorphic stated that the body would be muscular and hard and the person would tend to be aggressive and adventurous. Overall, the correlational study states that many convicts were mesomorphic and less likely to be ectomorphic. The issues with this theory are that people's body types may change and therefore they can go from being muscular to skinny to fat and then then will fit into more than one personality type. Moreover, this doesn't account for the people that do commit crimes but don't fit within, the, within his stereotypes. Hopefully you found this podcast useful. Keep checking in because we will be doing other future podcasts on individualistic and the sociological theories. And then later on in the year, we'll be looking at the pros and the cons and how these theories link to each other. Any questions, come and see any of your tutors in the criminology office. And remember to keep revising for that exam in May. Thank you.